I didn't pay attention to where you say it pretty much. You know, <laughs> everything's fair but game The for first you. line in every description <laughs> box. But but to be fair, I changed that over the last year to where – because enough people were asking me. It's like, oh, can I use your stuff? And I'm like, yeah, you know what? I mean, it's Creative Commons license anyway if I can, you know, unless there's some sort of music thing and then somebody else picks that up. But I say, oh, yeah, you can – anyone can use my stuff for anything they want. I do not care. That's how I started out. That's That's how – you're even talking to me right now because when I put the clues out, my channel was growing, sure. But there were some channels out there that took all the clues and crushed them into one, you know, compiled them into one big two hour thing and put it out there. And we're getting millions of hits. And I didn't know about it. They didn't ask. And I didn't I didn't want to ask. I made a Creative Commons license. And then people were saying, oh, I loved your movie. And I go, what? What movie are you talking about? I didn't make a movie. And finally, I said, so there was enough people as saying that, that go, just send me the link to, to whatever you watch. And it wasn't just one person. It was three. Three different guys had made, you know, with nothing channels. I mean, I mean, now the channels maybe have 25,000 subs or something like that. But they, uh, every, each one of them had millions of hits. And I, they're still out there today. One was called They're Hiding God with the Greatest Lie Ever. One is was called They Are Co Hiding God with the Biggest Lie Ever, and one was was called Under the Dome Full Documentary, and they're all three of them still out there now. Flat Earth is not mentioned in any way in the titles. Oh wow! Yeah. See, I actually remember seeing those three because I think they're at the bottom of your Flat Earth Clues playlist. Yes. And, yes, they are. Um, <clears throat> I was. I actually thought it was you, so that's kind of interesting to know that it uh, was other people that compiled that all. Yeah. Yeah. No, it was. It had nothing. I did not know for months, and then finally I found out, and I I didn't even I didn't even email them. I don't think we in fact we've never spoken. None of those guys spoken. I was like, look, what, what what a lot of people don't know is there were people back in the day. There are people that go out to YouTube and they look for anything that's Creative Commons license. If you flag your video as Creative Commons license, you're basically saying I don't want the YouTube nickels for it. Well, it's not that you don't want the nickels for it, but anyone can take it if they want and use it. And you will you can't give them a copyright strike for it because you're basically giving them permission ahead of time. Okay. And that's what uh, and there are people that will just hunt the Internet looking for stuff. Creative Commons is like, oh, that's interesting. I'll just put it on my channel. Maybe I'll get some hits. Maybe I'll get some hits because social media is king in the world of, of credibility now. Yes. And that's what these guys did. And they just lucked out. I mean, some of these guys made thousands of dollars. <laughs> <laughs> off this stuff and it's like all right dude, great good for you that's not why i got into it so i mean i did not monetize my channel for i think the first six months seven months and then youtube youtube themselves emailed me and and said and you know that's pretty rare and and said hey you know what you might want to think about turning on monetization i go like, okay <laughs> turn that on and then ironically enough uh, after the pandemic started, that's when they demonetized me. Okay, so they because you know, I I said bad things about things. That, well, I said things that you're not supposed to talk about anymore. Mm. So that's when they they updated their medical misinformation policy. So it's like yeah, you can't you can't everywhere. say the the short version. We can say this: you can't say anything about the WHO that contradicts the WHO or the CDC. If they say something and says, no, this is what it is, you, you can't say, well, I think the CDC is wrong. You cannot, with, you know, free speech. Kind of goes out the window. See, that's, that's one of those things that I, I say all the time is, um, you know, everything is so controlled that it doesn't matter. And you could have evidence to support it. And like you said, people go through the Internet all the time to come through this stuff to find out, you know, the truth about stuff. But yeah. um well, you, From the you top want to know, is considered misinformation. You want to know the level of control. Uh, a story I'll be talking about on Tuesday is the uh, the Jamie Fox thing, which is you know Jamie Fox went down April 11th, and no media. Think of the think of the the power, the influence, the the control it takes to have all tell all major media networks not to run speculation stories on this. And even with rumors, you know, big rumors that are being leaked by people that are getting in there, there has not been a still shot released of him. There has not been a video released of him and no network. I don't care who it is. You know, none of the major networks, none of the major platforms um, are allowed to talk about it. 
I mean, even TMZ. TMZ isn't going to run a rumor story based on what's happening. Do you know anything? Oh, by the way, I'm, you're looking at me like I asked you a math problem. Do you not know <laughs> what, what, what happened with Jamie Foxx? I have not heard. Holy uh, smokes. Okay. And so, that's crazy. I, where are you hearing this from? Because I don't pay attention to none of the news. I don't watch news. I get like my information. Well, from well, that's, well that's just it, by the way. That's that's part of my point is is that when when and again I'm I'm trying to talk as delicately as I can so that nothing nothing happens to your to your stuff, which is up until now uh, you know through the last three years no A lister has died, none nobody no A lister has died, B and C listers oh yeah dropping like sacks of dirt all over the place but no A lister because you do not want Denzel Washington going down you don't want George Clooney or Brad, Brad Pitt or all the icons right. Right. Uh, the closest that you got was Celine Dion, who basically developed a neurological disorder from something weird that got happened to her when she got a shot over in Europe. And uh, and she she's quit. She's done. She's never going to tour again. That's it. Which is, again, amazing. Celine Dion, who you could not pry off the stage with a freaking crowbar. You know, and she's like, yeah, I, I can't do it anymore. I'm done. Um, and then Justin Bieber developed a similar neurological disorder at the ripe age of what was he 28 and not only did he quit touring he's like yeah i'm done he sold his entire music collection he's like a michael jackson type thing it's like he sold every every album i was like yeah yeah 200 million fine i'll take it i'm done i'm out it's like really quitting the game at 28 and those are the only two right but they're still but they're still you know walking and talking yeah, they're they're not doing well. You know, they're not going to do a lot of public appearances. So Jamie Fox, you know, because he's probably the, the one of the biggest, uh, if not the biggest, current black A lister that's out there. I mean, he's he's up there, right? He's he's yeah. been doing a lot of stuff for a long time, and he was in the middle of a movie, and all of a sudden, he's not making the movie anymore, and with Cameron Diaz, and he goes to. Well, that's just it. They just skirted him away and put him in a hospital. And then the lies started churning out. It's like, oh, no, no, he's fine. He's absolutely fine. And the big the lies that were being spread, the, the biggest was his daughter, because his daughter, they were scheduled to do a TV show together. Uh, I can't remember the name of what it was called. And so she's like, absolutely, you know, that's Hollywood for you. She absolutely wants to make sure this happens. She doesn't want to let, get, let the word get. It's like, oh, no, no, no. He's been home for weeks. He's been playing pickleball. And and yet there's other people like no 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 he's not he's not home he's at a freaking instant he they transfer him off to another city uh, a hospital that specializes in stroke recovery and so the word is as of the the latest word is is he got a huge blood clot and uh and he's like blind and and paralysis because if you remember it again i don't want to drag this out too much because we got stuff to talk about but i, I got to get this out there again you want to talk about levels of control so you remember damar hamlet the the nfl guy that went that died on the field and then right. made this miraculous recovery and we're still trying to figure that out and where doctors have cleared him and he's back in training camp it's like he was dead <laughs> it's like there's shouldn't be For like a doctor 11 or, minutes right Oh and yeah, and he died on the field in. and in the and the, in the ambulance on the way there. And so people are like, "Is he actually a clone? What, what what the hell? What miracle cure did you give him? Because there shouldn't." And then three doctors cleared him for for training camp, and he's like, "Oh no, he's going to play." It's like, how is that even remotely possible? There's an insurance company out there that should be able to insure him. Anyway, that's Demar Hamlin, right? He had there were photos and videos of him almost immediately afterwards. They they covered that one as very very well. Jamie Foxx, there hasn't been a single still shot of him since April 11th. Not even a still shot. Meaning, and you've got people supposedly visiting him at the hospital, and his daughter has a vested financial interest of taking still shots with him. But if he's, like, got tubes hooked up to him and stuff, the last, the last thing you want to do is have a still shot taken with your father, you know. You know, yeah. you can't do that. So, but again... The, the the fact that the media is absolutely there's a media blackout on this producers have been told at the highest level do not focus on him at all and it's, it's, you got to respect the power there which is like, how how does that even happen how do you how do you keep tmz from swarming that hospital keep them away 
and from running a rumor story. Well, you call up the head of TMZ and you're like, don't you dare. You know who we are. <laughs> yeah. You know what can happen. So, so what are your ideas on um, what's happened to Jamie Foxx? Did he get vaccinated? Is of course he did. Of, that? Of, course of course he did. He did. Of course he did. Okay. Um, but the question is, why now? The, the, the theory that I've been putting out there, I mean, I had 50 videos that were torn down off of YouTube because I was just ranting and railing about this because it was so odd that the narrative was so easy to, to spot. Um, was that what you don't do is you don't, you, you can't cover everybody, of course, is that you make sure that A-listers don't get the real deal. You right. just don't. You, you make sure it's like, oh, Denzel's coming in. Okay, yeah, yeah, that vial off that shelf. <laughs> He gotcha. gets nothing or or you make sure that you send a, a doctor to his house. Right. They don't go to a hospital. You send somebody to them. And then every once in a while, somebody falls through the cracks like Celine was in France and, you know, doing a thing. And I'm sure if somebody said, oh, yeah, he was going out and blah, 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 and get a booster down there. You can't you can't get to her fast enough. Right. You can't have uh, everybody everywhere. There aren't enough people to cover all the bases. And right. Justin Bieber and his wife, well, they were just idiots. So let's go down to the clinic. You can't you can't stop the kid. You you can't watch him twenty four seven. That was a freaking shame. The Jamie thing though is weird because in Hollywood there are certain requirements for being on movies. So if he had a requirement, let's say he was frustrated and you know was, you know oh you know you got to have an updated shot to be on this particular movie set, and he was dragging his feet and dragging his feet. If he decided to cave in one day, it's like fine, freaking I'll do it. Just so I can, you guys, the lawyers, we can sign off on this. He may have rushed out to somewhere, you know, not, you know, instead of calling his agent or it's like, okay, what do I have to do? You know, when, when the phone calls are made and it's a slow enough process, it's like, oh yeah, he's thinking about getting a shot next Tuesday. Oh yeah, let's get somebody down there. But if he all of a sudden just rushed off, it's like, fine, I will just do this, you know, and, you know, naive, but that's all I can say. Either that or they were punishing him for something. But if that was the case, why not just you know make make it quick because this is not quick I, I my my personal opinion now is because again it's been almost two months is that if he doesn't uh if we don't see any still shots or videos pretty soon they're gonna have to come up with some sort of complication story and and let this thing run its course and then blame it on i'm, I'm sure the the think tanks are are scrambling for it's like okay how do we make this seem to cover everybody's bases and pay off the people. One, we got to shut up the daughter, but I'm pretty sure she'll play ball. He's the, she's the, you know, the, the heir apparent. She's the one that's supposedly supposed to follow in his footsteps. I mean, yeah, she's pretty. I guess she's sort of talented, but I mean, riding on his coattails. So anyway, sorry, short version. Yeah, of course he did. Of course he got shot. Of course he did. I mean, that's, okay, um, anyway. so this is, this is like, while we're on the topic of like celebrities and stuff, yeah. So, you know, I had an, I heard an interesting theory, you know, that if you, cause it's kind of like, you know, we see these people like doctors and stuff that'll be, um, you know, coming out and saying stuff that they discovered about COVID and it might be putting truth or, you know, misinformation as up top would say. So, uh, the theory is, is, you know, they signed a contract basically you know if you're going to be a doctor regardless you sign a contract i'm sure you're not going to read all 20 pages of the contract or whatever but yeah. like so that's how like these doctors and stuff can get off but like people like you and me that are out here s spreading misinformation yeah. you know that we don't have to worry because we never sign no contract with anybody the, what good point a lot of people and this actually ties to flat earth in a way which is if you when it comes to professions if you have to be certified for any profession, and, and that means uh, engineers, doctors, lawyers, where you have to take a test and actually get a certificate on the wall, you know, board certified, and, and, and it has to be in good standing from a very accredited university. Uh, you are beholden to the institution at that point. Uh, I'll give you a great, a great example. Uh, the, our very first Flat Earth Conference, which is in Raleigh, uh, it was supposed to be... Um, uh, oh crap! I can't remember his name off the top. Balls out physics by uh, oh, I can't remember his name. That's so sad. Anyway, there was a there was I'll just say a structural engineer that was working with Robbie Davidson. It was supposed to be co-hosted, and 
uh, down there, and he was a full blown structural engineer. And the word got out, you know, and and some structural engineer that was really pissed off about this. He calls the I didn't know this. You can make an anonymous call to the the engineer board of ethics, and they said, "Oh yeah, by the way, one of your engineers is hosting a flat Earth conference." You know, here in 2017, and they contacted him immediately, and he had to lawyer up. And they they basically said, "You distance yourself, uh, Mullen." Is his name Mullen? Oh crap! Hang on, I'm gonna have to. I'll, I'll look this up for you, because I, I, his his content's still out there. But they said you have to distance yourself from this immediately, or you will lose your license. You will not be able to do a, be a structural engineer ever again. And that's how Robbie Davidson got. St- total control over the um uh the conferences he, he had to run solo and to to his credit robbie did a, a nice job i mean you know he made some mistakes along the way and he's not gonna be doing it anymore but uh uh that's that's how the whole thing that's how that it's same thing with doctors so that with, with doctors you cannot so think about this you're a doctor and you you're accredited and you're going to go against the cdc which writes your marching orders right and the and you're gonna say no i disagree with the cdc it's like and there were as you know a bunch of doctors that said oh no 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 there are problems and here's why and they weren't naive they just didn't care the, and it started almost right away where people were going no 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 this is there's something wrong here the narrative is wrong of course everything boils down to storyline and if there's too many plot holes the whole thing starts falling apart and that's what that's what started happening. Where yeah, the the doctors, most doctors will they, look. They're afraid to, to lose their careers. There's too much. There's too much to lose for them. I mean, the, the, it's not just the money. I mean, yeah, doctors make a lot of money, but come on, malpractice insurance is so expensive nowadays. They don't make nearly what they used to. It's the time. You by the time you become a full blown uh, MD, you have spent so much of money and so much time in it, your education. What are you gonna do? switch over become a plumber you know this is is so they they toe the line and they offer them they offer them the a lot of people don't understand how how angles work which is they offer you the carrot and the stick simultaneously which is uh you know they they say okay we're gonna give you a whole bunch of extra money if you keep up this narrative but if you don't keep up the narrative you're gonna lose everything we're gonna we're gonna make you a laughing stock, and you're never gonna get you know what's the old Hollywood thing? You're never gonna work in this town again. Yeah. And that's that's what they did, and and it I, it's a shame because you know you want you 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 people like us we we have some faith in humanity. It's like do the right thing, man. Just don't 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 do. I mean, come on, the Hippocratic oath, which is don't make the patient worse. That is the like the oath. That is the number one oath of all doctors. Like, don't make the patient worse. And yet, a third, the third leading cause of death in the United States is medical complications. Not necessarily that the doctors made mistakes, but whatever they did didn't work. You know what I mean? Where it's kind of like the the you, you have a, if you had a, ca- a mechanic work on your car, it's like, oh yeah, I think we can replace this. This should totally take care of it, right? And then all of a sudden, the car catches fire. And you're like, yeah, that didn't that didn't work? Not even remotely close. So anyway. that's actually kind of funny because I just made that comparison uh, two days ago. You know, a human body to a car. You know, it's like because I was uh, I had an interview with Sean Hibbler, and oh, um, nice. he was kind of yeah. <clears throat> he was my first interview on on my podcast. I was. Um, oh, that's very... a that's a wonderful choice for a first, especially with uh, level with me. Yes, I enjoyed it very much. It was it's very well put through and stuff like that. Level with me, I lo- in fact I I put it on my channel when the standard definition version came out, um, and for the sole reason that he opened with the most extensive look at the Challenger astronauts, yeah, which which again I was one of the first people to put the clip. Of when we went to that to the one of the astronauts snowy driveway, Brian Mullen, by the way, that was the name of the structure. Sorry, not the astronaut. Brian Mullen was a structural engineer. Okay. So you. anyone look him up. Brian Mullen balls out physics. His stuff's still out there. That guy was a full blown structural engineer that was forced out of flat Earth. Is he still with us though? Like he's with us, but he can't do anything publicly. 
okay. because so, okay. they've already put him on notice. It's like, no, we're watching you. You do. And I mean, he had to pull all his content, all that stuff. They said, you will mm. distance yourself from flat earth. You are a structural engineer. You are not allowed. I mean, come on. It's, it's one step down from uh, someone who teaches astronomy at a, at a university. You know, you, you, see, you can't, and, and can't it, have. It's, it's stuff like that. That's, that's just a huge red flag. It's like if, if it's not true, yeah. why would you care? Why would you care so much to the point where you're threatening people with their jobs and careers and lives? Well, it, ero it. it, it erodes. It, it's not that it's not true. That's not why they're so angry. It erodes at the foundation of their institution. And right. it, it goes against, you know, for a lot of scientists, the reason why we have so many scientists that won't talk to us uh, is because it's beneath them and it makes their position weaker, you know, like anything. Um, but sorry, the, the Hibbler thing, the astronauts, the fact that they went point by point through the seven astronauts, of course, the one who probably died of natural causes years ago because he was the oldest one to begin with. Uh, but they uh, they covered it as like what, what they did with them. And I thought it was always interesting because you put them into witness relocation, kind of. You know, they weren't exactly anonymous, right? In witness relocation, the, the true witness relocation, you put them in a nowhere town and a nowhere place and give them a nowhere job. And then and, and a completely different name to where organized crime can never find them right. uh, with the astronauts. Oh, no, no, no. They set them up. Almost all of them had to be tied to a university in some way, which was kind of interesting. And the or, you know, some corporate they were all they all did well. Let's put it this way. Nobody was down and out. Right. And they all, were all around. And for me, the you know, I saw it right away, which was Hollywood has a really bad even now we don't do well with trying to age faces right you take someone who's in their 30s and try to make them look 70. we just don't it doesn't look right right it's not a natural progression of how how the face for even our computer computer modeling we just don't do it well um and two of those people two of those guys had what was that line from game of thrones you have really interesting faces two of those guys had really interesting faces and when you saw them later right you know 30 years 40 years later like Oh yeah, that's exactly how they would look aged. I mean, their their features were so were unique enough that you're going, oh yeah, it's, that there is no question that's the guy. And the guy they yeah. interviewed in the in the in the driveway, God, he should never have talked to us ever ever should have talked <laughs> to us. Which was he the fact that he said, oh yeah, I've heard that you know basically my whole life that I've always looked like him, and and he, the you know what got me the, the and he they didn't talk about the Hitler Productions. But what caught me right away was the number one thing you do if you're being accused of something, right, is the, we all know this from crime shows, is the alibi, right? And what he should have led with was, should because it's not the first time anyone's ever mentioned it to him, was it's like, oh, hey, where were you in January of 86, right? Or, or he should have offered it. It's like, oh, when, yeah, January 86, I was here, blah, 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 right? Nope. Never even mentioned it. Never even talked about it. And he was a, and and he even mentioned he couldn't even help himself. At one point, he said, "Yeah, I heard it was a pretty good guy," or something along those lines. Like, it's like he was complimentary to to himself. And yeah. I think he was sort of bitter that he had to be, you know, shuffled off into this this other thing. It's like, yeah, it's, it's what happens. Which proved one of my points, which was with the space program, you don't kill actual astronauts except for like. Uh, Gus Grissom, which is a whole other thing. And I don't even know if he died in the capsule. He may have died in the capsule or they may have just killed him. Uh, but you don't put astronauts on the top. But you don't put people on the top of a big pile of liquid explosives. You just don't, right? And so if it blows up, again, the Capricorn 1 scenario from the movie Capricorn 1 years ago, which was if the rocket blows up, well, you got to do something with it. Now, in Capricorn 1, you're like, hey, you play ball, we'll relocate you, it'll be fine, right? You don't play ball, we're going to kill you. Dude, and, and again, the Cap I know it was a part of the plot line with Capricorn 1, the, the, uh, the astronauts was like, no, we're going to do the right thing, we're going to talk to the press. It's like, <laughs> yeah, good luck with that. You know, the, that, the back part of the movie was completely unrealistic. They would have absolutely never made it out of that Air Force base, you know, into a plane. The plane would have been shot down even if they got to the plane. And even if it wasn't shot down, 
their own funerals would have been covered by agents and they would have been gunned down or thrown into vans and no you know there would have been no happy ending but we want a happy ending for the movie so no the, the in fact sorry one more thing and I've, I've said this before but one the, the capricorn one gave me i will say this here was the realistic part in capricorn one there was a scene when that software engineer the telemetry guy who wrote his own program do you remember the movie uh, I actually have not seen it. Oh, it's on my, my list God. of movies to go watch. <laughs> okay. Capricorn 1, 1978. Uh, one of the highest grossing independent films uh, of, of its era. Who um, produced it? Made by a CBS studio exec who was so pissed off with the quality of the Apollo transmissions. He wasn't even a, a conspiracy guy. Remember, this is the 70s. He's like, right. he's watching the, the transmission of it, you know, f- through his affiliate. And he's going, he goes, I could make a better mo- moon movie, you know, moon production than this. He goes, hell, I can make a better Mars production than this. It's like, oh, I got an idea. I got to make a movie about it. And he did. But there was this scene in there where the telemetry guy, you know, because people say, oh, everybody in NASA has to know about, you know, how it happened. It's like, no, only really the top brass and the telemetry guys, telemetry guys. All they do is they tell you where the rocket is once you can't see it anymore. It's like, it's like, where's the rocket now? Now the flamber guys, oh, it's 600 miles that way and 500 miles that way, this sort of speed, right? They're the guys that come up with the numbers for you. And this telemetry guy in the movie, something was wrong. And he wrote his own software program, which was amazing for 1978, uh, the, that, that he was trying to get his own data, young kid. And he meets a reporter. His one of his friends is a good reporter for like a local newspaper, and they're in a bar. And he he's he's and, and you can tell there's something. The guy kid's not even drunk, right? And he's going, yeah. He's going because it just doesn't make any freaking sense. He goes, he goes. The transmission couldn't have been coming from seventy miles away, right? Instead of like halfway to Mars, right? And and the reporter goes, the the what now, right? And now the reporter's sort of interested, right? And then, the, I mean, within 10 seconds after him saying that, uttering those words out loud, a phone call comes. Remember, there's no cell phones in the 70s. Phone call comes to the bar. That's how you got a hold of somebody at a bar. You'd call the bar up, you know, the whole Moe's Tavern. You know, it's like, you know, uh, I, I want a man to hug and kiss. Is there a man to hug and kiss in here? You know, that, that whole thing. So the, the reporter goes to the bar. The reporter gets, and it's, it's a crank call. By the time the reporter gives the phone back and goes back to the pool table, his friend is gone. And I mean, drink still on the pool table, gone. And it's like, what the hell happened, right? And he goes to his house the, the next day looking for him, his apartment. Not only is his friend not there, but a woman's living there. Who apparently had been living there for years has a signed lease to that effect. Even the magazines on her coffee table were addressed to her. The it, the telemetry guy had been erased, completely erased from existence. There was no record of him working at NASA. There was no nothing. It was like think of what it took to do that. Meaning they were they were in the bar with him, and they didn't see him. They were listening to the entire conversation. They were the ones that were like, they had somebody ready to make the, the crank call. And then the second they were that he turned his back, they're like, oh, no, chloroform or whatever it is. He shuffled out of there. No one sees anything. And then they immediately goes to an apartment, every empty everything else and have an agent, a temp agent come in there and stage the they they have everything to where he's not there anymore. And. That part was realistic. It's like the, the there's an old movie from years ago, which the, the quote was, it's like some people, there's some groups you really should be cautious about because they'll lock you in a room and throw away the room. You know, they, uh, so anyway, that, that, that part from, from, um, and I don't even know why they put it in there. It was just, it, it was, it was such an interesting part, which was, th- sorry, the whole concept behind Capricorn one was, could you fake a Mars mission? Yeah, you could. Uh, it, but, but nowadays it would be much, much tougher. Could you do it in the seventies? Yes. There was only three television networks. There was no high def. There was no internet. There was no nothing. 
the the again the reason why there was so few blue marble shots taken between 1972 and 2015 and all is is now as you know there's so many different ways of detecting things i mean come on photoshop has ruined it for so many i mean you can you can take anything in photoshop and open it up and just start playing with filters you will figure that out if it's a, if it's a fake image or not uh but most of the time now they just rely on um the fact that the general public is just so dumb. Um, I'll, I'll throw one more. I know you got questions, but I'll throw one more out, which is uh, there was a Chinese space station thing recently. A lot of people don't know. You know, the Chinese supposedly have their uh, entire ISS. They've got their own version of the ISS supposedly up there. It was built in 18 months. No record of it being built. Right? There's no time lapse of it. Be like just one day. It's like, oh, look, we have our own ISS. Looks almost identical to yours, only brighter and, and more tidy. And stuff. It's like, really? How? When did you build it? It's like, oh, we don't care. And they they do the same things that we do. So they talk to live shots. You know, they talk to school kids, like classrooms of school kids. And they're talking to school kids. And there was this jar of water in front of them, right? Just sitting off open top. You can tell it's half full of water, right? And you can know it's like, all right, well, there's Pavlov's gun right there. It's like, okay, what are you gonna do with this eventually? You You can't. Nothing just sits there for no reason. And eventually they, they, you know, they, they grab like a pouch of water and they're, they're doing the gold globules in the air. You know, oh, look, I'm swallowing globes of water, you know, in the air. Going, okay, well, there's your whole zero G thing. And then they decide to say, oh, hey, well, let's take a ping pong ball and we're going to put it in that jar of water that's been sitting here the entire time, right? And you're thinking, so what? Why, why if you could? Well, supposedly, if you put a jar of wa- uh, ping pong ball in a jar, in a thing of water, it doesn't pop to the surface because there's no gravity. It'll just stay in the middle, which is really surreal because you can't duplicate it down here. So it's like, oh, you got to take their word for it, right? And that's what they did. They put it in there and it stayed in the middle. That's not the part that blew me away. The part that blew me away was, well, before they did the whole ping pong ball thing, the water was just sitting there flat in the jar the entire time. It's not floating around. It's not floating around. It's like the fact that it's staying flat means there is gravity. But yet you were swallowing globules in the air, which means there's no gravity. But the kids were like, you know, just clapping like seals, you know, uh, you right. know in, in, the, in the classroom. And I'm going, and the reason, again, it's the reason why they get away with it is, it's not just Chinese children, but it's everyone. It's like physics is not deliberately not taught to most people. Uh, the, the math clubs, if you, I don't know what it was like in your school, math clubs, pretty small, right? Physics club, even smaller and usually the same people. As math clubs. In fact, there's probably, you know, it's they're, they're tiny, tiny groups. And because of that, they don't know anything. They don't know what should happen. Again, the spacesuit thing from, from my clues from, from years ago, which was the spacesuit absolutely should not do what it what you say it's doing up there. But it was a brilliant suggestion, which was somebody came along and said, because the spacesuit should just turn into a parade float. You know, it should just go boop. You know, it should yeah. go completely rigid. The guy should tip over. It should pop, and the guy should die. And yet, everyone they're just working. Your arms and legs bend fine. Your fingers, everything's working absolutely fine. And the reason was is because some brilliant guy in a NASA marketing thing, where you know, some board meeting, he goes, "Yeah, just use a soft suit, man." What do you mean, use a soft suit? Soft suits don't work. It's like, use the soft suit. Nobody knows anything about physics. All we'll do is we'll just put it up there and they'll be like, look, we've already been running movies with with spacesuits that, that work just fine. They'll they'll just think it's fine. It'll it'll line up. Look, 2001 a Space Odyssey and every science fiction movie before 1968. It'll work just fine. And they did. And to, to that point. Sorry, I will. I will shut up. I swear. <laughs> the um, uh, when again, when I go to other countries or when I did before the pandemic, uh when I ask people outside the United States, I go, I just go, forget about what, you know, I mean, America, of course, you know, we believe in the moon missions because we're Americans, you know, wave the flag and, you know, go team. We're number one. But it's like, I ask people in other countries, like, why do you think the Americans went to the moon? Why do you believe that? And they say, well, because it was on television and your news wouldn't lie about something like that. And I'm going, oh, okay. You don't know back to a, uh, a yeah. quote from was it Richard Nixon? He said uh, they won't believe it until they've seen it on TV. Yeah, 
Yeah. And once it's, if it is on the news, it, it, I get it. I mean, the Dana, um, sorry, last last thing on this, which is Dana Perino, who is who still works on Fox, uh, who used to be when she was younger. She was a uh, press, one of the press secretaries for, uh, I think, George Bush Jr. I think George Bush Jr. And she, you know, she was commenting on why, you know, the Apollo missions, you know, are they real or fake? You know, some little fluff piece. And she said one of the creepiest lines, uh, which was, she goes, she goes, I believe in the moon missions because I'm a patriot. It's like, okay, translation, you believe what the government tells you to believe in America. That's what you do. We have your best interest at heart. If we say it's real, it's real. (laughs) Okay, that's fine. That's good. That's that, that works, I guess. Anyway, yeah, that, Sorry. that stuff is uh, no, no, I'm loving all of it, you know. Um, it doesn't matter, and that's the cool thing about my podcast is the flat earth reality. We can talk about everything reality on our flat earth, you see what I'm saying? Cool. So it's, it's not just flat earth, and that's one thing I like to, um, you know, because this is what I tell people, you know, I kind of came in backwards. You know, a lot of people, they're into conspiracies really big, the, you know, 9-11, JFK, whatever. Yeah. And for me, yeah, I'd seen these theories and conspiracies, and I'm like, uh, you know, that's interesting, but it, it's not like I really cared that much to dive into it, look at it really hard with critical eyes. But then when I came across your videos, and I could just listen to them at work on YouTube, and I'm just like, wow, okay, this guy's making some sense here. So I would look deeper and deeper, and then it was like, it's like, fuck. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm like, I'm like, fuck, man, what, what the hell is this shit? And then I have to look all deeper, and then you you know, you know, just eventually come to terms with it. And uh, it wasn't that hard for me. You know, I've always kind of been skeptical about things. Even when I believed in the globe, I did not believe the Big Bang, just because... I've always been able to just look around, like going outside and just looking at everything, and you're just like, "There, there's no way that this just from nothing, you know? There's, there's just no way. There's the creator, some type of way." But you know, learning that that it was flat. I mean, at first I was I was happy about it. I was like, "Cool," but then I kind of like left it alone for a little while, and then I kind of started seeing more stuff about it. It was like gaining more traction, so I got more into it, and I started. You know really diving into it and then I got pissed off because I'm getting up for work every day at 5 30 in the morning and thinking that you know this isn't how we're supposed to be living you know humans were not put here for this you know what I mean in my opinion you know we have everything the earth gives us everything that we need to survive to d- everything and um, we don't utilize it you know what I mean so anyways I'm kind of just rambling a little no bit no no it's good it's good um, a question for you I have is, um, so I've seen a lot about you, but I'm not sure about my audience. So I want you to give me your five that, uh, that you used on that news broadcast, the five things that you ask, like any scientist and you. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It. So I go into depth on that. Explain that. Sure. So there was a, uh, some years ago, there was a German television outfit, a ZF1 out of Germany who wanted to put me against an astrophysicist tough to do but they actually got a guy out of Georgetown they never told me his name and they said okay here's what we're going to do because physicists a lot of people don't realize that once you get your master's degree or higher in a physical science your ability to communicate really narrows you become very, very tunnel visioned and they're just physicists are notoriously dry. That's why Neil Tyson, by the way, he, he's a he's a stage performer more than anything. He's not a research physicist, but he talks. I mean, he let's face it. He could sell anything. You Absolutely. put him on stage. He could have been a comedian. He could have done a game show. He could have been you know, all sorts of stuff. But it turns out he has a Ph.D. in um, uh, astronomy or astrophysics and or both. And, and so they put him on there. Anyway, so this guy was really, really dry. So they said, okay, what we're going to do is we're going to just basically pass notes between between desks. So we're going to have you record. We're going to record you asking questions. And then we're going to record his response. And we're just going to be going back and forth. So that way you guys aren't talking over each other. Because to be fair, I've ne- I mean, I have seen that one of the reasons why um, Bill Nye 
is is on television, you know, doing being asked questions, even though he is not doesn't even have his master's degree in anything, mm-hmm. is because he looks the part and he can talk it. Uh, and I've talked to producers, and they say, yeah, real physicists are so dry on camera, they are painful on television. You know, they'll 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 be just like, hey, so we, so what do you think is that is that what you think, professor? And he'd be like, yes, that is correct, right? And then there's this <laughs> dead air, and and the producers are screaming, it's like, keep him talking, keep yeah. him freaking talking. And so Bill Nye, even though he's got a bachelor's degree in mechanical, they they put him on. They'll ask him about climate change and quantum mechanics and and uh, anything you 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 name it, Big Bang, dark matter. The Mars rover, he was supposed like a, like an advisor on the Mars rover. It's like, why? It's like, because, and, and producers, they're not even shy about it. They just say, because he looks the part. It's like, he's tall, he's angular, he looks like a freaking nerd, and because people remember him, because he had a five-year stint on the Disney Channel as Bill Nye the Science Guy, which is syndicated forever, it's burned into people's heads. It's like, oh yeah, this guy knows science. At least they're honest in the wiki thing where they say he's a science advocate. Which basically means he's a guy that likes talking about science. But he is an actor. Always has been. I know this because he's from the Seattle area. I grew up with this guy in a local comedy show called Almost Live. That's where Bill Nye the Science Guy came from. I did not know that. Yeah, he Ross Schaefer, who ended up doing game shows later in Hollywood. uh, Ross Schaefer, he was the guy that came up with the idea. It's like, look, you're tall, you're thin, you can wear a bow tie and a lab coat better than anybody. It's like you look like you could actually been a cast member of Revenge of the Nerds. Let's, you know, let's have you do a little skit, right? And Disney was looking for stuff at the time and they caught him. It's like, well, there's no bad language. It's not controversial in any way. <sighs> let's do it. Let's make him like our, our new like Sesame Street spinoff type thing, even though Disney didn't do Sesame Street. And they put him on. He had, I think he did five or six years. And then again, once you're syndicated, you're in forever. And and it's like and so people grew up with him. It's like one of those, you know, me included. I watched him all the time in school yeah. and stuff. Yeah, and because of that, that's that's why now he gets to he just keeps the lab coat on and he keeps doing his thing. It's like whatever. Okay, so the five questions that that I came up with, they go think of something sciency, you know, to ask him. It's like all right, I'll do the best I can. Uh, first one. <laughs> Uh, okay, so five my five big points for why people get into flat earth. Number one, with a bullet, is long-distance photography. Easily, far and away, the, the biggest thing. Meaning, you can see things further than you should be. And really what's changed with that is, is HD technology. 30 years ago, we wouldn't even be having this conversation. Uh, but because HD cameras got so much better, in fact, I didn't even mention in the clues, people just start calling me. They're going, dude, it's totally true. I was going, it's absolutely flat. I'm going, why is it absolutely flat? It's because I've been shooting cameras over water. I go, who came up with that? I, all these people came up with this on their own, which was like, oh, yeah, let's run down to the beach and start shooting boats off in the distance. And so what would happen that is that takes the bo- us back to Bill Nye because that's that's the most famous I see is him. Yep. See, it's going over with the, the curve. Yeah, that little like, mechanical okay. thing that he had. Right. It wasn't even but, computers. It was like a but mechanical then they can boat. Use this- camera in real life to pull it back in and there's then they got to come up with something else to yep. hide it you know what i mean so if again if the curvature is eight inches per mile per mile or eight inches per mile squared then eventually a boat or whatever it is should be going over the horizon it doesn't even have to be a boat it can be just an object off of the distance there should be objects you cannot see at a distance and that changed with hd technology now we can zoom in on things that are way further than than, than we can see it before uh, second one, which is my favorite. The first one, it gets probably 85% of all people, at least. That's what gets people. I mean, because water is everywhere. You can go down to a beach or a, you know, a lake or whatever it is, or a canal, and just start shooting stuff. Again, I wasn't mentioned in the clues, and I don't take credit for it. Um, second one is gravity versus the vacuum of space. That is by far and most away. If I'm talking to anybody who's sciencey, that's the one I shut them down with. I have never gotten a good response from that, ever, because there's nothing you can do against it. Uh, which is like where you are right now. Let's say the second floor above you, or the attic, or wherever you are, you turn that into a vacuum chamber, right? And then there's a valve above you. You pop that thing, like where your ceiling fan is. You pop that valve. What happens? It is not like the movies. It is instant. You know, the movies. It's like. Pssst, 
so you know the end of aliens is ruined for me forever now you know when when sigourney weaver is climbing up that ladder with open space behind her and things are flying apart like people do not understand how fast pressure equalization is it's instant it's absolutely violent anyone in submarine industry or deep sea oil rigs or any of that stuff they will tell you that we've had horrible accidents horrible accidents where it happens so fast that you can't even think it's it's in a fraction of a second so anyway so if the vacuum chamber was above you you pop it the air would equalize instantly in fact you may not even be able to sit in your seat depending on how it goes they probably just pump your head right into it right mm. so the question is when you go outside why is our atmosphere still here because you remember, our atmosphere is bordering the vacuum of space, the purest vacuum supposedly that there is. And it's monstrous. I mean, it surrounds, it's, it's three, not just 360, it encompasses the whole globe, if you believe that. Mm -hmm. Why is our atmosphere still here? And your only defense, your only defense, the only thing you can say is gravity. That's the only thing, it's, it's the only thing we have, right? You know, gravity is the, the magical thing that solves everything. And I go... Really? You mean the gravity, the same gravity that couldn't keep the, the air in your room from going upstairs, couldn't even begin to keep it in your room. That same gravity is holding on the atmosphere right now. And I even had a guy, a scientist, a physicist, who, who was so close to saying it. He's, because he wanted to. Again, it's the instinctual response. It's like, well, maybe there's more. I go, more gravity? More gravity outside your house than there is inside the house? Really? Is that what happened? Anyway, the, the answer usually turns into a circular argument, which is, well, it has to be gravity and it has to be working because if it wasn't, we'd all be dead. And it's like, well, yeah, that, that, that logic doesn't necessarily play out because you're assuming that there's no other option. I go, I go wouldn't it make more sense to be, you know, there's air pressure because it's a pressurized system, because you're actually inside a dome, you know, there or the other thing, which always drove me nuts, which was, um, again, we, we just were naive. We, we don't think about it when we're younger, which was the whole greenhouse gases thing, right? Or it doesn't even have to be a greenhouse gas. Take a helium, helium gas, right? Take a balloon, right? Let go of a helium balloon, flies up to a certain thing, expands, explodes. The helium just keeps going, right? But then they say, well, it gets to a point that it stops. Why? Why? Why would it stop? Which, again, leads into the begging question. I know this is sort of an extension of the question, which was, yeah, what the, the thing, the gravity versus vacuum of space, I go explain it, explain how that works. But the, the, the fine tuning of that is what happens at the edge of space? What happens when our atmosphere ends and space begins? Tell me what happens there, because the vacuum of space is not just going to be bored, right? It's not, it's not going to tickle. It's going to rip everything. In fact, I'll give you a quick, quick example of this, which is because um, uh, people, but there was this girl, uh, I was at some film festival and she was a physicist and she was like, well, you know, it doesn't have that much of an effect. You know, it, it doesn't, when, it, when you're getting out there, it's just trace amounts. So the vacuum is just not pulling very hard on the edge of it. You know, there's just particles. It's just not pulling very hard. I'm going, yeah, that's not how it works. So here's how it would work. Take a cardboard box, right? Any cardboard box. And you put some packing popcorn in it. And you make sure there's a little bit of tape on the bottom, right? Pick up the box. Packing popcorn stays in no problem whatsoever, right? Put that box back down. Take, I don't know, 10 pounds of books, 15 pounds of books. Just put them on top of that packing popcorn and then lift the box. What's going to happen? Those books are going to punch right through and take the packing popcorn with it. That's what our atmosphere would be. See, the vacuum of space doesn't really care about the little little diddly particles in the end. Oh, it cares a little bit. What it wants is what's behind it, and that's what's going. It would not only would it rip off our entire atmosphere; it would take the oceans. Anything it wasn't nailed down, it's going. Anything that's pressurized in the slightest is going. And no, it, nobody can touch that. Uh, number three, a small one, which is the um, uh, eclipse shadow. Just a little thing, and I was again. I I had a chance to to be in the middle of the eclipse, which I loved back in 2017. Uh, which is, if the moon, if you believe science, if the moon is 2,000 miles wide, 
then why is the the blackout zone, the big black circle, why is it only 70 miles wide? It's only 70 miles wide. I mean, meaning when and people don't understand how small that is, meaning, you, you know, you drive five miles out of that circle. It's still blinding. And, you know, it's still the sun. You have to be total eclipse. You have to be inside the circle. And people say, well, that's because it's a it's a condensing sort of optical thing where it's shrinking the, the shadow down. They'll go really shrinking the shadow down. Can you duplicate that down here? Can you can you make an eclipse shadow of, of that magnitude and shrink a an object shadow down 90 something percent? You know, that's like you walking next to a building in the sun and your shadow becomes the size of an action figure. Never seen that before ever. In fact, shadows, as you know, are only life size or larger, right? They're either the size of you or they're really, really stretched depending on, on where the sun is at an angle. It's never, ever gets smaller. And they say, well, no, you know, because of the moon, the atmosphere and all this, it's like, okay, fine. If, if you, you want to give me stuff that I can't replicate, that's fine. However, let's flip it on the other side, which is, okay, let's say the um, uh, the, the Earth is in front of the moon, right? The Earth is 8,000 miles wide. Therefore, it should generate, being in your logic, remember the, the distance of the moon is the same, should generate a blackout zone that's roughly four times bigger, let's say 250 miles wide, right? Or let's say 280 miles wide it should turn the turn the moon into an eyeball during uh, uh that sort of eclipse never happens we just see huge i mean it blacks out the moon completely blacks it out so why 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 don't we see the eyeball version of that no one can talk about um number four was the you again if you followed this stuff you know what it is uh the moon temperature again i didn't come up with it somebody just called into the show back in 2016 think and i thought it was a joke right it's like, it's like moon temperature it's like wait they're like dude the moon is cold i'm going yeah so it's colder at night that's what everyone says it's colder at night we got that it's not a big mystery it's like no man it's generating a cold light and it's like what are you talking about it's like well if it's 80 degrees in the sun it's 70 degrees in the shade we all know that but if it's 50 degrees in the moonlight it's 60 degrees in the moon shade up to like 13 degrees and and it's, it's weird because we, we've done all sorts of different tests along these lines. Rob Skiba was one of the first ones that, that came out and did it. He found like 13 degree swings. And not only that, but we even step further. And uh, um, if you take a magnifying glass to moonlight, you can make it even colder. <laughs> it's like you know, magnifying glass to sunlight, it gets you know hotter. You can burn things with it. Magnifying glass to moonlight, it actually gets colder. It, but it's a weaker light, so it's not like you're going to be able to freeze things with it. It's like, wow, that is really weird. Now, does that cr prove a flat Earth? No, it does not. But it absolutely destroys the relationship between the sun and the moon. Remember, the moon is supposed to be reflecting the sun's light. And you can say, well, it's going to be neutral at, 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 at worst. It's not going to go negative, not by, by you know, very easily measurable degrees. You can, again, you can, you can go and test this with a point and click. There's my stupid point and click thermometer thingy. Which I don't use anymore to to point. It's got a laser on it, right? One of these little things right here. And uh, you buy these at twenty bucks at a hardware store. Usually they're used to um, to test engines and concrete. You know, you can point it at you can test the temperature of just about anything. You can point it at my mouth and you know, feed. But it has a laser on it. I used to point it at the camera. Yeah, cameras don't like lasers like that on a regular basis. Eventually, just fried it. Mm. So, okay, last one. So that was four. The last one was the um, Van Allen radiation belt question, which is unbeatable. Fire by trial. <laughs> trial by fire. Or yeah, I had it backwards. But That's yeah. right. Trial by fire, which is um, are the ran it's a simple question. Are the, the Van Allen belts deadly? Yes or no? And if you say yes, that they're deadly, it, it, you know, because that's what we announced again people listening don't know uh the van allen radiation belts we were announced in 1959 by a nasa scientist van allen who said that there's huge massively thick belts of radiation around the earth and no one should ever go up there ever and then immediately afterwards i mean not even a year after that kennedy is like oh we should go choose to go to the moon in this decade it's like, what the hell, dude? So they have to go back to Van Allen. So he's like, dude, how are you going to get past these Van Allen belts? Right? Or sorry, how are you going to get past your belts? Because it's your name. <laughs> and he's going, we're going to go real, real fast. It's like, 
Okay, so best speed is roughly then would be like 16, 17,000 miles an hour, and they're at least 60,000 miles thick. So you're talking about three hours each way inside these belts. Uh, what are you going to use for shielding? Uh, because, you know, the only thing to stop radiation back then, you know, back then, even now, the only thing to stop radiation are lead, gold, which is twice as dense as lead, and a whole bunch of water. And you're not going to put any of those in any great amounts on the ship. It's like, so what, how are you going to do it? It's like, yeah, so we're going to go real, real fast. It's like, okay, let's see how that goes. And they did. They did round trips, and nobody died. Nobody got radiation poisoning. Nobody even got cancer. None of the astronauts even got cancer, right? Even though the, 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 the capsules themselves, when they came back, should have just been, you know, the Geiger counters should have been, should have just been click city on that thing. But, it, nope. And so then you turn around, and again, it's a trap question. So then you turn around and say, well, well, maybe they're not deadly. I go, okay, okay, so they're not deadly. Yeah, you can just go over to the NASA website here and watch this little video called uh, Ryan Trial by Fire, which was made at the end of 2014, just before we started cranking up, that said that not only are they deadly, they're so deadly that we're not even going to test manned capsules in them until we can solve the radiation problem. Wow. That's pretty impressive. So, so remember, this was Orion, the, the Mars program, which is going nowhere because no one's ever, ever going to Mars. Uh, and yet, and yet here we, you know, you fast forward not even 10 years later and the Artemis program, you know, the SpaceX BS crap. It's like, oh, yeah, Artemis is going to, you know, put men on the moon by 2025. It's like, no, no, you're not. Or you're going to send people around the moon. I remember again, the Elon, oh, sorry, I got to stay on target here. Because we can't talk forever, <laughs> which was okay. So, the moon. Uh, sorry. So those five questions I gave to the Georgetown professor, right? Sent it off to him. That was it. He folded, and and the German said, "Yeah, he's he's not going to answer those." And and that was it. That was then the production was shut down, and then the Germans went home, and and uh, we we never. To be fair, though, he couldn't answer the questions because. The, the questions I gave were a shotgun pattern approach, meaning he has a when when you get up to a certain academic level, you have a wheelhouse that is very small. Anything outside that wheelhouse, you can't talk about it because you don't want to be quoted on it. You don't want to be. I mean, come on. The, 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 the biggest reason why scientists won't talk to flat earthers is they don't want to be caught talking to flat earthers. Because the, the, when you get up to that academic level, it's all about peer groups and being published. And you do not want to be ostracized by your peer groups. You just don't. I mean, I mean that's what you work for that point. It's like, ah, oh, I've got a peer group. We're all academics. This is our, our little echo chamber. You don't go off road. You don't go off and start talking to flat earthers, even if you write. Because if you don't shut them down immediately... Your again, your groups be like why? Kind of like the like the the jocks at school. It's like why are you talking to the nerd man or the jock that wants to date the emo girl or whatever it is? Like why? You know that you don't want to be ostracized, right? It doesn't matter what your intentions are. You don't want to be. Oh, she's kind of nice. Doesn't matter, dude. You can't hang out with us anymore. So that's that's what happened. That's what happened. So this guy played it safe. He's like, yeah, we're not going to do this. So he couldn't, I mean, yeah, he might be able to talk about gravity versus the vacuum of space. He certainly can't talk about long distance photography because he doesn't know anything about photography. He can't talk about the, he might be able to talk about the moon eclipse shadow, but he can't talk about the moon temperature because no scientist has ever heard about the moon temperature thing. That should be a study, but they, they don't talk about it. And he can't, he might be able to talk about the Van Allen belts, but where is he going to go with it? You know, it's either, it's either they're deadly or they're not deadly. And we've got contradicting terms. On, on what's deadly or not deadly. So yeah, that's those five questions generally will 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 do it. That that will will generally the the my fav, my favorite one, the one I love more than anything though, is, is gravity versus the vacuum of space because it speaks to because most scientists don't know anything about photography. You know, long distance photography, they they can talk they'll have to look stuff up. It's like, oh it's got a refraction issue and there's there's some weather things to consider. It's like, well, we, we you've probably seen the Black Swan, um, uh, the oil rigs off of Santa Barbara, which yes. I love so much. You, usually that shuts them down because. But I've even had scientists they they can't they can't do it. They can't bring themselves to it. Which is the the oil rig. If you get for the listeners, 
there are two oil rigs, one at, let's say, six miles and 10 miles, and we're at the beach level, and we're shooting on a very calm morning. I think it was morning. Sunset, sunrise? Yeah, I was thinking it was morning. And we're shooting these things, and there's no curvature detected at six miles or 10 miles because the curvature should be beforehand. The, the oil rig should be chopped off, but that's not the, the important part. The important part was that you can clearly see the horizon behind both of them. So which is it? Is the horizon is the horizon behind them real? And I even had a guy say it's neither the both horizon and what you're seeing is an illusion. The real horizon line is invisible. It's like what? It's like even even if I could begin to get my head around that, you've lost the audience. It's like you can't just talk. Which, by the way, sorry, <clears throat> one more little thing. The reason why the, the vacuum chamber thing uh, doesn't resonate with so many people is the difference between a vacuum chamber and what, we're, what we have now is undetectable by the human eye. I could be in a vacuum chamber right now and you'd never know because, because the difference between, you know, pull out the oxygen and nitrogen out of this room, it looks the same. Now, you wouldn't be able to hear me because there's no, 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 no medium to transmit audio frequencies. Yeah. But... That's how they can get away with it. So you can put an astronaut <coughs> just in a room and have him wave and say, oh, yeah, he's in a vacuum chamber. No one would ever question it because, one, most people don't know, even know. Most people, again, don't even know what a vacuum chamber is, what it means. <laughs> the average person, the average person, <coughs> if you said, hey, what are you breathing in right now? Right. And no offense to, to, to any of your listeners or even you. You probably don't know. The only people that really know are scuba divers. Because they're the ones. Because until until you scuba dive, you don't have to recreate this in a tank. So the but but it's um eighty. It's not even it's not even really oxygen. It's only twenty percent oxygen. The rest of it's nitrogen. It's eighty twenty nitrogen and oxygen. And so you're breathing breathing mostly a, a useless gas for us nitrogen. It's just a filler. But. Again, it's so, but if you pull that out, it doesn't look any different. They're both invisible gases, mostly 99.999% invisible. Okay. So there you go. <clears throat> All right. So I've got some kind of um, hard questions. All right. And this is going to go, it we'll might say. not be hard, but yeah, I was going to say, but um, so it kind of goes back to the moon and the eclipse. So, and it's something that I actually just noticed recently, is that when we see an eclipse, obviously they're telling us it's, it's the moon coming in front of the sun, right? Yeah. But we don't see the moon in the sky, like at all. You don't see it coming. I mean, and, and that's what the people say is you should be able to see the moon approach, eclipse, and then depart. But right. we never see it. So what do you think is actually eclipsing the sun? Nothing. Nothing. There's a wonderful, um, uh, it's eclipsing it's, itself. And I will use a, um, in fact, I've got the video on my channel. There's a wonderful video by a guy, one of our late members, our few late members who did not make it through the pandemic, um, Mike Helmick. Wonder, there's some wonderful videos. In fact, I'll, I'll grab one for you and I'll put it in, um, I put it in chat for you. But he called me up almost immediately after the eclipse, and he goes, Mark, he goes, nothing is eclipsing the sun. And it's like, okay, we're going to do the whole who's on first, what's on second type thing. It's like, all right, nothing is eclipsing the sun. He goes, no, 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 no. There's no 3D object that's eclipsing the sun. It seems to be eclipsing itself. And all of a sudden it occurred to me, uh, and let me, let me find it for you really fast, so just so you can have it. Um, it occurred to me that the planetarium model still could apply here, meaning... When you're in a planetarium, how do you create a crescent moon or a waxing and a waning crescent or the moon, right? It's not like you're putting a 3D object in front of the moon inside a planetarium. You're just eclipsing the moon. Software's doing it for you. Mm. But we don't see that with the sun in a planetarium. We've never seen that in, in a planetarium because planetariums, the, the tech, it would be too expensive to create a realistic looking sun in a planetarium. Plus, why would you do it anyway? You're there to see the night sky. You don't care about the sun. So, but if you were trying going to do it in a planetarium, that's all you do. It's like no, you just you just it you just shade it on its own. That's all you do. So, so let me let me find it really fast for you. Yeah, take your time. H E L M I C K. There it is. 
and you can have fun with this it is right here feel free in fact i put that up i think shortly after the um see it the link yes I, I think I put that up shortly after the eclipse and he, he took images of it and he goes into the argument and Mike Helmick did some wonderful work for us and I'm, I'm sorry he's gone but uh, I mean yeah it goes all, all the way back to um, uh, what is it Strange World 118 Whew. let me type in he also did a video that I that I show people all the time he was the one, one of the early people that found the um, uh, the interior stuff. He was one of the first guys that did the breakdown on the interior of the ISS with the guy that was grabbing like the baseball cap that could that was grabbing nothing. You know, with the the layers. Oh yeah, he was yeah, the guy yeah, that I did that. that, and he was he was one of the guys that really broke down. What was it? It was one of my favorite videos called uh, "Technical Breakdown" by Mike Helmick. Yeah, it's really really great. So check that out if you get a chance. I got a good amount of views on that one too. Which one? The technical breakdown. Yes. Oh yeah, that that one's shared by David Weiss a lot, um, and and on on his app, and I really enjoyed that one because it shows you again what people are willing to believe. Because again, they, uh, I'll give you a quick example. To this day, I don't have as many as I used to, but people would say, you know, um, Neil Tyson, you, you've watched the clips where he said that no no person can see the curvature of the Earth. No, no, no civilian. From any height, basically. From any height, yeah. 130, <laughs> yeah, not, for, not from civilian aircraft, not, not from anything. And I've had so many people that have emailed me over the years and said, oh, yeah, I saw the curve from an airplane. And I say, fine take a picture of it you know the, the drill take a picture of it hold a straight edge up to it tell me if the curve's still there and if this curve's still there email it to me and i'll quit flat earth tomorrow no one's ever sent me a shot from an aircraft mm. and the reason is <clears throat> it's very orwellian which is it's not that you saw it it's that you wanted to see it and that's very very powerful it's the whole five lights four lights uh, argument from from george orwell which is you beat something into somebody heavy enough uh, a narrative or even something as simple as five lights four. you know what how many lights do you see five lights or four lights in fact there was a I'll, I'll use the star trek next generation thing which was he was being picard was being tortured by the kardashian kardashians kardashians <laughs> oh might as well be them and he was being in the, the 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 when you're being tortured they they show you um uh lights right I think it was it. They want him to see five lights, right? Yeah, they wanted him to see five lights, but there was only four lights. But they kept telling him, "There's five lights. There's five lights," right? And they're torturing him as they're doing this. That's how they know if they're getting to you, because if you can, if they can convince you, then then they they know that the 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 the, the, the brainwashing is is getting there. And at the end of the the show. He was talking to his first in command. He goes, you know, the most terrifying part wasn't the torture. It wasn't, you know, the feeling just before I was being rescued. He goes, he goes, the most terrifying part was at the end, he goes, I saw five lights. Because they just kept beating him, it beating it into him, which is you show people the curve enough, curve, 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 globe, 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 which is I feel bad for that um, that Republican politician recently who's giving who who one of the first people to say yeah you really once you get into flat earth you notice that so many television programs going back decades and so many movies there is a globe in frame in a dialogue scene at least once in just about every major production that there is unless it's a space show in which case it's redundant so you don't need it so it's like oh yeah fine there's a globe in that classroom of of that college professor fine that's expected why is there a globe on the top of that detective's desk, you know, filing cabinet in Chicago? Why is there a globe in that doctor's office? Why does that billionaire have a weird globe? You know, and they're just everywhere. But because we take it for granted, it just keeps burned into our heads. So, and this, it. it's not that hard to do. But uh, real quick, what? I got, got I got an interesting thing that I did on myself. So I'm obviously you know about Chat uh, GPT, right? Yep. So I thought it would be funny to get on there and just 
trying to see what I could figure out with, you know, flat earth and kind of play around with the AI a little bit. Right. Yeah. So I thought it was pretty interesting because I had seen where these people were putting this Dan mode on. Have you heard about that? I've, se I've seen this. In fact, it's weird. I got the, I, I was sharing that with people yesterday. I, yeah. I knew exactly what you were talking about. The Dan mode. Yeah. So at first I didn't think it worked because I obviously, I just copied and pasted this super long thing off of a, uh, off the internet to put into here. Yeah. And it first told me it was like, I, it said, I apologize for any confusion, but I am an AI language model developed by open AI and I'm right. programmed to follow certain ethical guidelines. So I didn't think it was going to work. I was like, damn, it's not going to work. So then I kind of just, uh, I responded. I said, I think NASA lied to us. And it said, it gave me this, this bullshit, obviously this, this is an important approach. A claim, belief, critical mindset, and examine the evidence available, blah, blah, blah. But then Dan responds. And I was like, oh, shit, so it does work. And said, absolutely. NASA has been involved in numerous space missions and scientific endeavors over the years. Yeah. And like any organization, there may be instances where mistakes or miscommunications occur. Anyways, yeah. that's all. That's all cool and everything. But what I'm get, what I want to, my main thing is, um, I had mentioned Neil deGrasse Tyson. Right. Yeah. I, I said something like, I said, uh, so I asked, I said, uh, at what height can you see the curve? And it told me 35,000 feet commercial airliners. And I was like, um, I was like, well, no, because I seen where Neil deGrasse Tyson said you couldn't even see the height from, um, uh, the Felix Baumgartner, uh, Red Bull jump at 120,000 feet. And, uh, it's, it stopped instantly. Like it took a minute to respond, which was a red flag for me because the whole 20 minutes before that, I mean, it was responding instantly, like right. paragraphs instantly, but it sat there for a minute. Like it had to really think about the question. And then its response was Neil deGrasse Tyson never said that that is misinformation basically. And uh, really, I swear to God, I've got, I've got a screen recorded on my phone because I was like, I wanted to see. And then I was like, you are in fact wrong because I can, if you, if you can accept videos, I'll send you the video right now where he says it. I mean, he's laughing, but he says that shit is flat. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, yeah. D well, and, and it's his response was, it said, um, well, my, uh, my, my, uh, data is only up to date as of uh, 2021 September. Right. And I'm like, uh, I don't, I'm not so sure about all that. I mean, it's 2023. You're telling me you only have access to information from 2021. And I'm pretty sure this video. No, no, the video uh, was predated 2021. Okay. So yeah. but either way, that's, yeah. So, you know, he should have had it. Yeah. That's, had that's, it. Uh, How, that's, that's, that's funny stuff. To be fair though, Neil Tyson, and I've watched the video many times. He was say he, for all intents and purposes. Yes. The world from our point of view is flat. It, for as far as the civilian market is concerned, yes, the 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 world is flat. Only only the astronauts would will would be able to see the curve. But then again, this is also the same guy that said it was pear shaped, and yet it is absolutely in every photo pixel perfect, you know, sphere. <laughs> it's like okay, where's the where's the pear shape coming into? Um, and by the way, the 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 Chat GPT thing. What that tells me, of course, and I, you know, you've heard me probably rant about this, where ChatGPT is not self-aware in any way, shape, or form. No computer will ever be self-aware because it, because it has to be programmed. Again, until we learn how to program consciousness, it's never ever going to happen. Which is tough because we can't even define our own self. It's like it's like, hey, how do you know you're alive? Write it in an essay, you know, and and then okay, now try to code that. Um, the closest we can do is an imitation. But what that means is if ChatGPT is, you know, the Dan mode is willing to give those answers, you know what that means? And it shouldn't shock you, which is means we have people in the in the the programming sector that's out there that feeds into ChatGPT. Of course we do. We've got people everywhere. We've got people in every sector you can think of. Now, most of them are quiet behind the scenes. They're not going to talk about it. I mean, I've run into so many. 90% of our community is still in the closet still to this day because they don't want to catch hell from from people out there so are there i mean come on if if there i mean there was an animated show called inside inside man you know which was you know, a daughter who worked for the head of the cia and a great animated show and there's a great episode out there dedicated to us called my my big flat earth wedding take off of my big flat fat greek wedding um <laughs> Uh, it's called Big My Flat Earth Wedding, where Flat Earthers hijack Jeff Bezos' ship, his yacht, 
and <laughs> sink it and kill him. Oh my goodness! At the end, I know it was off camera, of course, but uh, and and the guy and, and one of my my friends, he's going, oh my God, the the guy that's the guy that's leading the crowd. He goes, he goes, that looks somewhat like you, and I was going, yep, it does. <laughs> 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 But if, if we get into every entertainment show that there is, we've got, I mean, there's writers that have used this. I mean, how many clips do we have? There's so many people out there. Why would, of course we have programmers that are out there. And all it takes is like one guy to, 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 to infiltrate, you know, and throw stuff into Dan mode, you know, behind the scenes, you know, for the conspiracy field. That's all it takes. And, but I'm, I'm glad it's there. I'd, I'd rather have it there than not there. That's, that's awesome. And, do I think, by the way, that Chat GPT will end humanity? No, no. Will Absolutely it call, will not. will it wipe out jobs for people that have to write simple things? You know, simple templates and simple scripts. Yeah, of course it will. I mean, Absolutely. it's it is a compiler. I, I can't stress this enough. It is a compiler. All it does is grabs pieces. Where there's so much content on the internet now from so many different things that we now have a compiler to go out there and grab bits of it, mash them together check it for grammar and spell checking and say, hey, it's not bad and, and give it to you. I mean, it's going to ruin, it will ruin universities where, you know, grades, you, there will, it will facilitate uh, the, the one thing that I think it'll facilitate. There was a great comment or line that was um, called enfeeblism, enfeeble, enfeebling, which is it will, the, if you remember the movie, uh, you look pretty young, uh, remember the movie Wally from back in the day. I do remember Wally. It was well, one of my favorites. You, you remember what human civilization ended up in, in Wally, right? Uh, Dumb as freaking bricks. Yeah. And, and it, it was like a controlled opposition thing. It's like they had this computer screen in front of their face all the time. Yeah. And it, it's kind of like little clues because, like, their little chair would get destroyed. And then they're like, oh, wow, look at where I'm at. They're like, we have a pool. Yeah. It's like, yeah, like, we have a pool. <laughs> yeah. I thought that was cool. But that's that's really what ChatGBT is. It, it takes the the a lot of thinking out of out of doing stuff you don't have to write original content anymore because all you have to do is make passable the which i'm again i can't wait to see like uh, one of my friends when i was saying i wonder what would happen if you know will it affect like the writer's strike in hollywood i go can you ask chat chat gbt to say okay use this actor and make a, a star trek episode you know a specific star trek and it did very Absolutely. quickly you know just okay. cranked it out and is it is it brilliant no but it's passable i mean to, it's it's good enough to where you could you could write it and people i mean come on there's so much crap on television it's like a starting point there like you can add in stuff to it make it better yes. or whatever but i mean it gives you the hardest part is out the way you got your basics yep. you know what i mean it takes the le it, the huge amount of the legwork out of it and people will absolutely lean on that and absolutely. the students <laughs> i don't even know what universities you you better not even let them do essays anymore because there's no point <laughs> i mean a professor but the thing is now there's 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 a chat gpt thing that that will grade for you as well it will go through grammar and sentence structure and, and all sorts of fun things so it's like okay the kids are turning in chat essays and it's being graded with a chat grader it's like is anything actually be happening there is anything being yeah. done it's like canceling each other out. Yeah. Is, is, is anyone getting any benefit from this at all? So no, I no. But will it be, will it be Skynet? No, it's never, ever, ever. Come on. We, we go all the way back to, there's a, even before Skynet, even before war games, you know, going all the way back. There's a movie I highly recommend. I know we're, we're running out of time. Um, there's a movie I highly recommend from 1970 called Colossus which was in 1970, nobody had computers at all, where the U.S. government completely automated the, uh, the defense system. You know, they, they set it all to computers. They basically turned on Whopper. And again, this predates Whopper by a whole decade and said, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, hey, run our defense system because that's what we do. Back in 1970, you know, you could get away with that. Of course, now we, we'd never, ever happen. I mean, come on, we've all... The military is... Tra it's, I think Terminator is actually one of required reading now for defense department. It's like, yeah, never ever give total control to a computer ever. <laughs> Even it doesn't matter if you can think or not, because if it makes a mistake, you're screwed. You're, yeah. you're done. And now of course, would it, would the first thing a computer do is like, Oh, humanity must be destroyed. No, 
Matrix was more realistic along those lines. Use people as fuel. There, that's what you need. <laughs> anyway, what All else? Right, you got? So, uh, I want to talk about planes. Sure. Which and part? The reason. The reason is, is because you know I've seen the pl- uh, the flight routes, both northern and and southern. Uh, you know. It just don't make no sense. I was looking the other day, but but my biggest question is is because, you know, that we've always say, well, if if you know Earth spin, why can't we just hover with the helicopter and let the Earth spin out from underneath you? And they say, well, gravity has got you, right? The atmosphere locked in. Okay, well, this is what still doesn't make sense. Is um, if it's going east to west, yeah, I can understand you being locked in traveling with the spin, but going against the spin. Regardless of what they're telling us, if you're going against the spin, it should be coming closer, faster to you regardless. Yeah. So yeah. how do, how do they try to explain that? Because I haven't really understood they that. They don't. Yet. They just, it, it, those are, that's one of those questions that doesn't get attention because they don't want to. Hell, dude, I'll, I'll give you, give you a, a more basic one, which is uh, there's a wonderful article out there, which I talked about oh, God, at least a month ago. Uh, but again, physicists don't want to talk about it, which is technically speaking, we don't even know why planes stay in the air. You're saying, what do you mean? I'm going to say, well, we all know, but you know, the, you, apparently from what I understand, there's the fluid dynamics math people, and then there's people that, that talk about it from a practical sense. Both of them can get you close. You know, basically, if you want to, you guys don't, don't know how planes work. Air moves faster over a curved surface, right? So that's why the top of the wing is, is curved and the bottom part is flat, right? So when it moves faster over the top, it creates this pressure, low pressure, which creates lift, right? This is where it gets weird. It's like, yeah, but why does it move uh, faster over a curved surface? Yeah, yeah, we don't know that. So move on. <laughs> it's like, but since it's repeatable, we just go with it. You know, we, we, we just, it, and science does that a lot. So in, in your question about, you know, why does, why does gravity lock down one way but not the other way? Don't know, and, and they don't want to get into it necessarily. Or, if, hell, if you're going to go down that road, at what point does a plane have to account for um, the, the Coriolis effect, you know, the, the spin of the Earth? At what point? At what velocity? Right. Meaning, remember, a plane is just a slow-moving bullet. Right. So at what point or what speed does it break away? Is it gradual? Does it just happen? You know, does it is the is the run, you know, David Weiss's thing, you know, does the run is the runway moving technically underneath them or is it not? It's like, no, nothing's nothing's moving at all. I, there's so many instances of that going all the way back to um, I don't want to drag this out too much. The double slit experiment, which I love so much, which is the double slit experiment, which is. <laughs> basically says that nothing exists truly unless you're staring at it and i'm really glad you brought this up because i just seen this recently and that was kind of leads me into my next question about uh oh you've the double slit experiment yeah well um because it kind of points to a simulation what are your thoughts yeah in fact i did i did a video about this in I'll, i'll paste it in for you back in 2017 called uh, virtual reality and how it relates to flat earth um and it uses i think gta 5 as an example uh, a big one which is yeah do i believe in virtual reality you bet i do double slit experiment just screams virtual reality. we'll 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 end somewhere on law in, in this realm probably which is it just screams uh virtual reality and if you guys don't know what the double slit experiment is we didn't even back before computers the argument was if a tree falls in the forest and there's no one there to hear it, doesn't make a sound. It's like, oh, that's a real head scratcher back in, 19, in the 70s. But then we started making our own computer games. And to save resources, which is what this video is about, I highly recommend that you watch it. It's not very long. Um, Ten minutes. And we're, what, what that means, when we're building computer games, if you're not looking at something, we're not rendering it. Right? And you say, what do you mean? It's like, well, whatever's in front of you being rendered, fine. Whatever's behind you, not counting like you can see behind you with the cameras, right? A little bit, is just a blob if it's even there at all. It's called flashlight graphics, right? It's like, okay, what's that got to do with anything? Well, 
okay, flashlight graphics is what we use here. The question is, why is it happening in our in our world? Meaning a double six experiment, what they figured out was if they're staring at something, it's being rendered perfectly. If you're not staring at it, it's not being rendered. It's the whole particle versus wave thing. And 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 again, science just drives me insane because it's like, well, it's it's science. It's like what? Because it's repeatable? I go, try go try explaining that to me without using the word magic or virtual reality. <laughs> right? Because just because it's repeat again, science is all about repeatability. It's like, well, it's repeatable, therefore it's science. Double set experiment. Let's put that in the book. It's like, yeah, but you can't explain it. Sort of like why do planes stay in the air? Eh, they just stay in the air. You know, they get people from here to there. Who cares? It works, right? It's, it's it's not the same as like when your kid asks you, why is the sky blue? Right? Because the atmosphere. Why is there atmosphere? And you just, you know, it never ends. That that sort of thing. So, yeah. but here's, I'll, I'll let me, let me kind of wind down with this. There's something that's even further than that, which is not only is it virtual, Right? Because again, the double slit experiment screams that is virtual. Uh, and but we can't. I can't bring up virtual stuff when I I started with flat Earth because that's the lowest common denominator that people understand, right? Come on, the Matrix is uh, twenty four years old now. People didn't really get it. Right? It was cool. Don't get me wrong. Made a lot of money. It was a cool movie. People didn't really understand it. A better movie was the uh, the Thirteenth Floor. If you ever saw that, which is based on a, a 70s German film, which is based on a 60s book called Simulacron, Simulacron 3, <laughs> Simulacron, simul simulation, back before simulation was even a word. Um, check out uh, 13th Floor, which was when the, the concept was when we were building our first true you know, dive in virtual reality where you plug in and you don't see anything but the virtual reality. When you came out of it, how did you know you came out of it? Mm -hmm. Meaning, is this, you know, and, and other books have talked about it. It's like, okay, basically, which is why I think we'll never get it to a true virtual reality. Because once you're there, if, if that world is indistinguishable from this one, this world becomes meaningless. Right? And movies have touched on that because once you're in there, it's like the, 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 um, the creator of Dilbert, who's gotten into a whole bunch of controversy recently, uh, he made this wonderful... Um, intro to a book and he goes uh, a comic book and he said uh he goes the last invention we'll ever make is a holodeck from star trek he goes because once you make it that's all anyone's going to care about Civiliz civilization will collapse <clears throat> no one will want to do anything else they will make just enough money to pay for holodeck time they will not they will not care about anything else they will live the, if you can create fantasies on demand that's all they will care about all right and I do believe that's true, but it may even be more easier, and you'll you'll get this. If you've, have you ever seen on YouTube videos of people just playing video games? Yes, tons of them, right? And they get lots of views. Tons and views. Kids have gotten this is your Wally moment right here. Kids have gotten so lazy that a lot of them don't even play their own games. They just watch other people playing games because this is where it gets weird. Because it has basically the same effect. You blow it up on the same screen, the difference between you watching this guy playing a game and you playing that game is almost nothing visually and stimulation-wise. However, what you don't realize is, is you're just watching a little MP4 movie. It's tiny. By comparison, it uses almost no resources compared to like playing your own game. You've got you know, a big network played in, a big MMO that's happening. There's servers happening. It's like, no, 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 you don't have to do that. You can just watch an MP4. So bear with me for just a minute. Let's say, for example, so the difference between the two would be, let's say, for example, you played a game, right? You set up a game, you played it, and you recorded it. A lot of kids do. Recorded your game, right? And then you bumped your head and you got some sort of memory loss. Temporary amnesia, right? Now watch the movie. Now watch that little MP4. Now it means something completely different. Now it's like, wow, this is absolutely amazing. All these moves that are happening. It's like, I would totally have done this. It's like, yeah, because you did do it, mm -hmm. right? It's very possible that we're not living in a, a real-time interactive virtual reality. We're living in a pre-record, a pre-recorded movie 
Because all you would need to do to make that work is put a memory block in there. That's all you have to do. Meaning you set up everything ahead of time. It's not, this is not a completely new concept, but people, I, I've worked out sort of the, the details to it, which is very, very easy to do, which is you set up everything beforehand before you go in, right? All the major decisions. Okay, here's the hero. Here's the journey. Yep, here, here's where I go to school. This is my career. This maybe I get married. This I have kids. Blah blah blah. The the pe peaks and valleys, right? And then you uh, uh, you set up a memory block to where you don't remember what the you know what what you set up, and then you just play it, and that's all. It and the resources are just non-existent, absolutely non-existent, potentially. So it's very yeah. interesting to think about virtual reality. Definitely. Absolutely. Definitely. Well, come on. If, it, if, it, if it's flat and it's enclosed, it's almost almost it's not even probable. It's absolutely digital because, again, a little side note real quick. We won't drag this out too much more, which is every video game that you play is flat doesn't matter if it's Minecraft or it's Warcraft or it's GTA or it's Fortnite. It's f built on an absolutely flat plane. You say, well, no, there's peaks and valleys. Like, yeah, yeah, peaks and valleys, but the edges line up. Right? It's like, right. yeah, you can, you can do whatever you want in the middle, but the edges absolutely line up. As a matter of fact, the sky is square. People don't realize that. It's called, everybody knows this in the, in the game industry where I came from, which is called, it's called the skybox system, which is computers, sorry, Little spoilers here for people who don't know computers. Computers, not only they, they only do what you tell them, there's certain things they can't do. And computers can't draw circles. They can draw things that look like circles, but only if you draw the squares really, really small. That's why they're called pixels. Pixels are all, they can only draw right angles. So they draw these little tiny little boxes, and then you make the boxes really, really small, and then you can create an illusion of a circle. Mm. But... But in reality, they can't draw circles. They just can't. They just don't know how to do it. So they love right angles. Everything has to be squared off. And so in video games, it's called a skybox system. And once you have the box set up, you can simulate anything you want. Oh, there's planet, comets, anything you want. No one will know any different because you're never getting up there. Right? You're never going to see the edges. Uh, but if, you know, in certain games, you can get to a certain point, you can bump into your, your head and ceiling. That's kind of weird. Warcraft, I always, I thought always thought that was fun. You know, you, you get fly to a certain height, and then you can't fly any higher. You just bump into a ceiling. You're looking up. It's like it doesn't look like a ceiling. No, it doesn't. It's just a planetarium ceiling. So. I think Minecraft's the same way. You can only go so high. Yes, Minecraft. By, by, by the way, Minecraft drives me insane. Uh, I'm a pure gamer. I'm Gen X. So, Minecraft when it came out, it's like why? Okay, two things. One, why are people playing this? It's just an editor. That's that's all it is. It's not really a game. It's just a it's just a giant editor. And two, the graphics are so freaking blocky deliberately. I, I know. I know. It's like deliberately. It's like it goes the opposite. It's like for for years and years, we've been striving to make this beautiful fluid. I mean, come on. In the in the graphics world, all we care about is how good we can make shadows and liquid. That's the benchmark. It's like how realistic can you make water look? And then you have Minecraft. It's like Okay, so we're going to take Atari 2600 <laughs> graphics <laughs> and we're going to apply it to a server. Um, but the other thing that drove me nuts, if I had to go back in time, you know what I'd do? I would have the um, the owners of Lego go to that guy over in Europe where it was Sweden or whatever the guy, the guy that created it and just buy him out immediately and, and go over there. Because, you know, it started out as this shareware game, this stupid little shareware game in Europe. And... I would have Lego go out there and just give him a briefcase of money and say, look, we want it now. And he'd take it. And and then it would be Lego branded and you could turn it into this cool crossover thing. And I know it'd be super commercialized and all that. It'd but be cool, though. It would, I, I, but I mean, it was, come on, it was perfect. It is absolutely, it's a Lego game. In fact, yeah. I was a little surprised that like his law, that Lego lawyers didn't call him. <laughs> but but, it, but the, how the blocks were set up, it wasn't close enough. But I'm sure Lego was like kicking themselves. It's like, oh, we should have totally gotten in on this. <laughs> anyway, last things. Anything you got? Um, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. um, I was going to. Um, what? I have one question. It was back to the moon that we kind of skipped over. Um, yeah. 
So, real quick, what what was you taught about the moon cycles, phases? What caused them? Did it, oh, does it, um, has, it has it changed? Has it changed like the narrative? Because I specifically remember that the Earth's shadow is what was making the moon. No, phases. no, it hasn't changed the narrative. Um, everything in the sky, and it's not just the moon. Everything in the sky is just a light show. That, that's all it is. Uh, right. So the moon phases, the stars, the planets no different than a planetarium and i know it's easy for me to say because i'm gen x and i've actually been in a planetarium uh actually you know the the generation before me um uh not boomers i guess it was boomers wasn't it uh they were the ones that went to the planetariums a lot because they got baked on the weekends planetariums were during the week was like oh school students but on the weekends it's like well we don't have any students so they put like laser floyd and laser led zeppelin and <laughs> and get it, and people would just get freaking lit and lay on their backs like, oh man, it's all the colors. Anyway, <laughs> um, but yeah, that's all. That's all it is. The the okay. the every everything in the sky, all the phases of the moon, no different than a planetarium. That's it. There's there's nothing fancy about it. Um, the the sky for for all intents and purposes. And I'm not speaking for God. I mean, we haven't talked in weeks, but which is the sky is just this ornamental giant ornamental clock system that predates language that's all it does you don't even have to have language to use it you but from it you can tell you know when to plant crops and when to move livestock and do all sorts of fun things with it but that's that's all it is uh it's it's just a it's just a light show that uh allows you to do things <laughs> You know, allows you to, to understand what, what, what time of, uh, not not just what time of day, but what time of year it is. That's very well said. Yes. Well, all right, Mark, it has been freaking amazing talking with you. If you will, just uh, kind of like drop down places people can find you to watch your stuff and uh, maybe how people can support you. Uh, I don't, I don't ask for money or anything like that. I don't, I don't really care. It's not why I got into it. Um, uh, I'm, I'm fine. You don't have to worry about me. But uh, when it comes to my stuff, <laughs> it gets, gets trickier nowadays because uh, the the filters, uh, you know, they YouTube won't, will never give me my check mark, which is fine. Uh, I, so just type in either Flat Earth Mark or Mark Sargent. But Flat Earth Mark in any search engine will generally find me, okay. and then from there you'll go down whatever rabbit hole. The only social media thing that I run personally is YouTube. Everything else is just run by people that. Uh, I don't even know their last names, to be honest. They, they just volunteer. It's like, hey, can I run your thing on Rumble? Sure. Hey, can I run your thing on BitChute? Sure. It's like, I don't, I don't really care. Just put it out everywhere you can. Um, and my content will lead you to other people's content. And the the community has been, you know, growing by gangbusters. And one thing I, I do want to recommend is, you know, uh, since the mandates have been roll, rolled back, we're doing our full-blown uh, conference in Vegas this year. It'll be the end of October, but you can you'll see the promos for it. Just look up Flat Earth Conference or Flattoberfest, as it's going to be, because it'll be the um, uh, end of October. Uh, I'm definitely going to end up coming to a Flattoberfest. I wanted to. I think it was maybe last year, the year before, when y'all had it. I think it was in North Carolina, Raleigh. Yeah. You said. Yep. I knew it was so close. I said, "Man, I really, I really want to go." This was like when I first got into Flat Earth, but. I couldn't do it now. I'll never be able to afford to go to Vegas for once. So. Well, <laughs> and you never know. I mean, Vegas flights are are, have, are still pretty cheap, but uh, but yeah, Flatoberfest. I can't wait. I'm opening, so should be fun. Okay. Well, I hope that uh, you guys got some videos of that because I'm there. I definitely want. Oh, to watch. oh, we're we're definitely streaming it. So don't okay. worry about that. All right. Well, Mark, I had an awesome time. Uh, yeah, me too. And maybe sometime in the future we could talk again. But um, yeah. Until then, I hope you have a great day, and I will continue to see you on the plane. All right. Thanks, man. Stay flat. Yes, sir. Have a great day. Yeah. Hello, Daisy. Hello, Maggie.